Friday morning car delivery. Got chassis, full trailer full of chassis in here. New Maxim chassis. Yeah. Body parts and a bunch of fuel tanks. Yeah, I've been waiting on this for a while. All right, so we've unloaded four cars. Jerry's got an engine here. Another car and three more cars. Check that out. Suspended in the air. Four, eight cars. Okay, we got everything unloaded. Bunch of axles, bunch of cars. Jerry got everything. In. Jerry got everything in here in one piece. You did a good job, Jerry. Appreciate it. Thank you. How long have you been doing this? First time. First, first time. this is your first time. <laughs> no, first time today. Oh, first time today. Yep. Uh, actually too long, I think. But oh well. Everybody's gotta be somewhere, right? Well yeah, I thought I was retired, but I think it's called retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Billy Dietrich, sprint car mechanic and driver. I've been around racing my whole life and it's pretty much all I know. We created this channel to share the good and the bad and everything in between. Our crew may not be the most experienced or professional, but we get it done and we have a good time doing it. We'll show you what it's really like. Racing Weekly is some of the best tracks in Central Pennsylvania. I'm also going to share some quick car tutorials, mechanics, and parts, and whatever else I feel like. So like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, boy. Hey, welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're going to show you the differences in chassis. We got our latest shipment of Maxim cars in here. We got some standard cars and we got some tall cage cars. We run into this question very often. So today I'm gonna to go through it all with you. So stay tuned next. Well, we got our two new Maxim frames here. We got our standard car and we got our tall cage car. But before we get in the details on these, we're gonna talk about bodies. And your body options. So let's walk over here and see what we got for bodies. So Maxim has several different body styles. We're going to start with this one first, this black body. It's an Aero Force uh, body. Uh, it's probably been the most common body the last, I don't know, five or six years. Um, five juice buttons hold the hood on. You got your dished nose cone outside the rail here, inside the rail here. Uh, the dash is also a little different compared to the KP hood, which we're gonna talk about in a second. Um, like I said, it's black. You have multiple color options. Just wanna throw it out there quick. You got white, you got black, which are the most common, but you do have other gel coat options. This is a, a gel coat. So you can go with blue or red, and there are even some other colors also, but black and the white are the most common. So that's the, that's the one style. And we got the KP 23, which is our newest hood. Um, quite a bit different. We can start with the, actually the shape of it, as you can see, this is definitely a, um, a more of a, I wanna say kind of a boxy shape here, but that was more of a rounded shape. It's got this, I'm gonna call it like a little snorkel here. It's actually cut out here to let the air go in to the air box. Uh, more Zeus buttons on this hood. Uh, there is two, four, six, eight buttons versus the five over here. So more Zeus buttons. Uh, that's kind of a big deal for some people, at least for me it is. And then we got the, the nose cone itself, which is an entirely different shape. It goes inside the rails. It is still scooped. As you can see here, the difference. Uh, there, you know, the scoop there. Uh, and then the dash on this car is actually flat compared to the other style. We'll, we'll walk back here and look. Um, this, is, this is flat in here. There's no bubbles for like your gauges. Where the other style hood over here, I'll get Heather to walk here and look, you can see it's bubbled out here. You typically put your gauges here and your MSD box over here. Um, arm guards are very similar. 
Uh, this style here, the KP style, this is actually, you can use it on either, any chassis, you can get any style you want on there for the arm goes, arm guard goes, but it's nice and smooth, not bubbled out quite as big as some of the other ones. But uh, you have body options and there they are. So you may be saying to yourself, well, there's two different bodies, which one's better than the other? It's, it's personal preference. I'll tell you, on my side of things, on the business side, a lot of people want the latest and the greatest, which would be the KP body because it's new and it's cool. Not many people have it yet. We don't know how that goes, right? You want the latest and the greatest. So KP body. The other style body, my personal thoughts on my race team is there's less Zeus buttons. Um, on and off easier. And this this also, I didn't mention, has a snorkel goes underneath the hood here. So I kind of like that. And I also like how the, the nose cone lays over top of the actual hood. Where this style, it's the opposite. The hood meets on top of the nose cone. Here again, personal preference. Performance-wise, I'm not sure if there's going to be a whole lot of difference there. There, there may be. But uh, there's, there's, the, there's the differences, in my opinion, as to... Zeus buttons, less Zeus buttons in the shape. Well, we're going to start with our standard car here. This is an 8740 standard cage maxim. 87 inches is the wheelbase. That's from the center of the axle to center of the axle. 87 inches overall. The 40 inches would be from the leading edge of the motor plate to the center of the rear axle, which is what we call a standard car, 8740. Pretty, pretty standard across the board for most manufacturers. Like I said, a standard cage, so it's not a, not a tall cage, it's not a long cage, just standard cage height and length here. So, standard car all around. Now, there are some options with this car that we'll go over. We'll start up here with the front of the car. One of the first options I see is welded-on nuts. This car has all the welded-on nuts for the shocks and radius rods. All the nuts are welded on, so instead of having a, have a bolt and a nut, the nuts are already welded to the chassis, so there's no messing around with nuts. That's a pretty popular option people get. Uh, also, up front here, we got the turn down torsion tubes. Uh, turn them down for weight. They take the OD of the tube itself, as you can see here, and they mill it down. Uh, the shiny part is turned down in diameter, just to save a little weight. As we work our way back, we've got our shock towels here, shock towers. They're wrapped with the additional bracing for strength, both sides. You know, if the car would happen to, you know, say you'd pull a wheelie and the car would slam down hard, you know, it'd give you extra support there from, you know, breaking the shock tower off of the, of the down tube, which it does happen. It isn't uncommon. So there's a strength in that option right there. Uh, as we move back through the car here, uh, we'll, we'll look at our top wing mounts, dual wing mounts. We, we kind of get that standard on all of our cars, the way you have the option of moving it front or back. I would say the back set is kind of standard, and the front set is, is more or less your extra set, or you can move it front if the track is really wet and heavy, you need to get the car freed up. Uh, same thing back here on the back, we've got our wing tabs, dual set of wing tabs, and our wing cylinder mount. Pretty standard stuff. Um, as we you know, approach, the, I'm going to walk around to the right side of the car. One another option here is a three-hole W-Link option. Uh, a standard car comes with one hole in the top, one hole in the bottom. This car has the, the option of moving it. It's got three different locations, top and bottom. So you can, you can really do some adjusting there with your W-Link. You know, slick track, you want to get more right rear weight. Pin the right rear harder if you have your options there. Um, this car also has spuds, spuds welded in the chassis and the diagonals here for your seat belts. You, know, you want to ratchet in your seat belts. Uh, you've got the option of bolting them in on the right and the left. It's got it on both sides. It looks like this car, you're probably going to bolt it to the right and then to put the ratchet style on the left. So that's, that's the majority of the options that are not standard. That I see on this car. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, they're pretty much, I'm going to say a standard anymore. This is for the fire extinguisher. A little tab here is where you put the pull knob. So instead of having to worry about trying to fix the uh, the T handle, pull handle on the dash or somewhere else, Maxim is putting a tab right there so you can just bolt your fire extinguisher 
your pull knob right there. All right, one more option on these cars. This car is set up uh, for a 33 gallon ATL fuel tank. Got the tabs welded below the torsion tubes here. And then the top or front tabs are welded out wide. Uh, that's for like I said, a 33 gallon ATL tank. If we look at this car to, to the next to us here, this has just standard Saldana or fuel safe style tabs where it mounts on the side. Um, fuel tank options, that's pretty much what you got. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the cockpit and what the options are in here. Like I said at the beginning of it, this is a standard height car, standard cage car. Uh, we're gonna start with the safety bars. You know, in the last several years, the Outlaws have implemented a specific bar uh, measurement from the front to the back here where this bar has to be located. This is a bowed out safety bar where a lot of them are just straight up and down, which we have on the, other, on the right side of the car. So we've got our safety bar here, bowed out, proper distance front to back, so it's legal. And on the right side, we have our standard traditional roll of outlaw bar, which is just straight up and down flat. It's just flat with the right side of the car. Now we'll move into the actual cockpit itself. On this particular car, the A, which is this thing here, is the shape is an A, but it's behind the seat. As you can see here, there's mounting holes for your seat. Typically, you're only going to use one set of the holes, either the top or the bottom. And on this car, the A is welded what we would call front. And we'll show you the difference on the next car, but this A is forward. It's on the hip rail. And why that's important is I'm going to show a measurement here. We're going to measure from the A to the power, to the steering bar support there. So we got 27 and a quarter inches from there to the A. Okay, so A's forward, 27 and a quarter inches. Now also, with that being said, the, the seat bar right here, this seat bar is up, where I would say, not necessarily up, let me rephrase that, standard height. You know, as you can see, they're not flat. We get down here, and these bars aren't flat. They, they're bowed up, and then they come across, and they go back down. So A is forward, standard seat bar, and then we'll move to the right side of the car, and we're gonna measure the height of this cage and I'll explain to you why that's important here in a minute. I'm going to measure from the top of the bottom rail to the top of the cage. As you can see here, it's 52 inches to the top of the cage. Standard wedge maximum chassis. So this is your standard car. And there's some of the safety options. Now we're going to go transition over to the tall cage car and explain the differences in that. And this will all probably make sense to you. So one of the biggest things we run into here at the shop is, it's going to sound weird, but you know, I don't fit in my car. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't have any leg room or you know, I'm six foot three and above and I don't have any room. So Danny has this problem or he had this problem as well. Several years, he would have the standard car and they would give him as much room as he could get, but he'd still be sitting pretty high in the car. So this is a common problem for a lot of people. And they, they came up with this car, it's called an AU car. So AU stands for Australia, but it's two inches taller. This car is taller all the way, front and rear of the cage is two inches taller than that standard car. Now, well give me some measurements here on, on this. So you know, A number one, if you're, if you're looking at buying a used car, some of the things you should be looking for. And number two, if you're just getting into racing and you're not even sure if you're going to fit in a car because it does happen. Guys buy cars, they want to go racing, and they don't even realize that, unfortunately, they just don't fit in the car. They're just too big in the torso or don't have, they have really long legs. So we're going to go over some of the stuff on this car that we've done to remedy that problem. All right, so we'll move back here, and we'll, we'll start with the, the World of Outlaw Bars. As you can see, you can get a good shot of this. Uh, this bar is actually bowed out. So instead of being flat, like that one was on the right side. These are what we call big boy bars. So obviously, if you're getting a tall cage car, you're a big boy, you're gonna need as much room as you can get. So these are big boy bars, they're bowed out. Still roll about all, all star legal. So both sides have the bowed out bars. This side also has an additional bar. Uh, this, this fellow wanted just to close that gap up there. Not a bad idea, but 
just to close the, the gap up there for keeping anything coming in the right side of the car. Now we talked about the A on that car, we're going to talk about it on this car also. It's different. As you can see down here, the A is moved all the way back on this bar here. And the reason we do that is because you need more room, as much room as you can get. So we'll put the tape measure on it here. Same measurement, you're gaining a whole inch. We're at 28 and a quarter. So you gained a whole, a whole inch, which maybe doesn't seem like a lot, but that inch could be a difference between you know, your knees hitting the steering box or your knees having you know half an inch, three quarters of an inch of gap in there, which you don't want to be racing with your knees tight against that steering box. So if you do take an impact, you are going to move some, and that's just a recipe for a disaster. So you got your A all the way back. You got an extra inch of room there. <clears throat> now, one thing I didn't mention on the other car that this car has different is the power steering. Actually, well, the bracket here on this car has moved a half an inch forward. That's why it's shaped like this. Um, it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's a half an inch, which ain't a whole lot, but there isn't a whole lot of room in these cars to begin with, so every little bit helps. So this, this car's got the steering box moved a half an inch forward. It's almost touching this rail here, so... A's back, steering box is forward. Now we'll move down here to this seat bar. Uh, this bar is, is one inch less in height. So instead of it being up further, it's, it's a one inch less in bend. Here again to give you some, you know, get your seat lowered in the car, give you as much headroom as possible. And this is an option that Maxim does with all their cars unless you order it without it. This is an adjustable bar. Um, actually there's a bolt in here with a, with a spacer for your, your sub belt on the seat, your, you know, your five point harness. Um, a lot of times with, with the way the seats are made, the hole in the seat is forward. So if you wrap it around the bar, there's a lot of pressure on the seat if you don't have this. So you can adjust this out to meet your, your, you know, where your, your sub belt comes up through the bottom of the seat. It's pretty cool because a lot of, you know, a lot of years you're either drilling holes in your seat to get that strap where it needs to be or you're just running it at the wrong location. So cool option Maxim came up with a couple years ago. So if that's on there, you can adjust that to fit your needs there. Um, next thing we'll do is we'll walk to the right side of the car and we'll give you the measurement. So on the other car, it was 52 inches from the top of the bottom rail to the top of the cage. And this car is 54, it's actually like 54 and 3 eighths. Now, this, and saying that, why is it, it's a little more than two inches. And so, this, this, this cage is taller, it has to be longer, you know, because can't, you can't have the same, you know, bends in because of the height of the cage. And so, they had to make the cage a little longer. So, you, you got a taller cage car, you got two more inches above you, front and rear. So just I'm just going to use Dan as an example. He's six foot three ish, maybe a little taller than that. So with the standard cage car, he didn't have much room below, you know, the cage. He was pretty, you know, pretty close to being flush with the top of the cage. So now he's down two and a half to three inches. So now he's got two and a half, three inches above his head. So tall cage car. If you're a tall guy, or big guy, or if you just want the extra safety of the, you know, more cage above you. That's what you need right there. All right, so just to wrap up this video, uh, we are Maxim dealers here. We've been Maxim dealers for quite a while. All these cars that you see here are, are all sold. Uh, there is a bit of a wait list, but they are getting much faster at Maxim. They got a third table up and running, so you know more cars are being produced, so that's good. So if you want a new car, by all means, give us a call. We can get you on the list, get you a build sheet, get you figured out what you want for sure. Now, if you're not sure if you need a tall cage car or not, you know, by all means, I have standard cars here for myself that I use. Dan has a tall cage car. Dan has tall cage cars for himself. Boy, tongue tied there. Um, you're more than welcome to come over, sit in the cars, figure out what you need. You know, number one priority should always be safety, 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 safety. You know, the last thing you want to do is get in a situation where you should have one car or the other and you don't have what you need so that option is always there give us a call we can help you out for sure um yeah anything else we can do for you we appreciate your business we appreciate you watch give Danny a call give me a call and uh thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time